Hello, this is Podcasting in Three Easy Steps with me, Juliana. And me, Susie. We've spent years creating award-winning podcasts and now we want to share what we've learned with you to help you get your podcast out of your head and into the ears of your audience. In each short episode, we'll give you three simple steps to create and market an awesome podcast that your listeners will enjoy. We're passionate about podcasting and the power it has to connect with your clients and community and transform your business. Hi, welcome to Podcasting in Three Easy Steps. It's me, Jules here. And me, Susie. Hi. It's It's a joint effort this week. And we've teamed up to talk about the podcast show which took place in London last week. Suze, how did you find the show? Well, in our previous episode, I talked about feeling completely overwhelmed last year by that many people and so many talks. And although I was more prepared for it this year, it was still full on, wasn't it? There was loads to see and loads to do, some brilliant talks on offer. But yeah, it's exhausting, Jules. How did you find it? (laughs) overwhelming is definitely the the word I have used to describe it I was using to describe it at the event last week yeah that's probably the the key thing it was a brilliant event it was huge it was bigger than and better than last year but it was very overwhelming because it's firstly the venue it's a brilliant venue the business design center but it's so noisy and a lot of the talks are within a a small stage within the main venue some of them are in separate rooms but the ones in the main venue they're really hard to listen to and concentrate on what people are saying because they've got loads of people walking past so like the volume of noise is is pretty immense and then the volume of people it felt much busier than last year so there are loads of people and then there are lots of people that we both know, loads of people that we used to work with. And so when you see people from so many different parts of your career, and this is going back some 20 years for me, it's quite an overwhelming, it's a fun, but quite an overwhelming experience. And I was doing quite a bit of work with my Fresh Air colleagues. And so I was uh, spending time with them and then spending time with, with other people uh, who I knew who were there and then trying to go to some of the talks so it was yeah good but overwhelming. I think I think you really need that kind of a real focus when you go to things like that so I definitely had taken my own advice and gone through the program um, a week or so before and then kind of whittled it down to maybe four or five talks that I had to go and watch because I think otherwise you're sat there going what's on next what's on next or who's on there and it can just you feel completely um, yeah bamboozled by information and talk. One thing that did really strike me was a week, there was a big stage for Sky News this year and they were broadcasting live from there. And it really um, made me think about how podcasting as an area of growth is definitely still there. So if you haven't got one, there's still time to get in there. It's obviously an area where, you know, the big players like Sky, BBC are obviously still putting lots of money into but also that once you do that, you know, all the other things like we're t- going to talk about video in a moment, but the pressure gets heaped on the independent podcasters of you've got to do this. You've got to think about this because we're we're against these massive companies now who've got loads of money, loads of production team to put into it and to make it sound amazing and look amazing too. Definitely the focus is on the video and you're nodding there, Jill. So I know you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I'll come on to video in a minute, but I think There were the big players there, the BBC, Sky News, Spotify, Amazon. But then you've got the the kind of next layer down, the independent. Well, I say independent, a lot of them are now owned by the Spotify's and the Amazons. But the more independent producers and distribution platforms that are, are quite interesting and they're quite big. And then below that, you've got the much smaller companies and below that you've just got the independent creators it's kind of great to see what the big companies are doing but also great to hear from some of the really small creators I think that's what I would have liked more of actually and and something that a a few people had mentioned to me they wanted to see more people like them so um, when I met up with some other independent uh, podcast um, creators they were like why aren't any of the talks like people like me why is it always the big companies talking so I think if that's something that I would suggest if anyone was listening who uh, who works on the podcast show 
let's have some more independent areas and also things like workshops that might help other creators so workshops to help you um, choose music or write an introduction or lots of little workshops for people who are maybe starting off or haven't got the budget of Sky or Wondery or whoever it is I think would be a really good thing to do. Yeah absolutely and it felt like there were just too many things to go to. I, I, I think there are about 10 different talks happening at any one time and there was one time I think there were four things that I wanted to go to and I was completely torn. I was like, well, which is the most useful? Which is the most useful? Which is going to help my podcasting career grow? Um, but yeah, it was it was good. It was good, but full on. I'd be interested to see what happens next year because I think the venue was a bit squeezed this year. So the way it is, you know, you've got this big floor where there's lots of uh, people exhibiting. And like we mentioned, Sky News Studio was there. There was a big BBC Sounds area and production companies like Fresh Air, who um, Jules does some work for. But I think where the the rooms were, um, the talks were, they were often really squeezed, big queues, couldn't get into the ones that you wanted to get into. So I almost feel like it, maybe it's ready for the next step up next year, but we will wait and see. But today we really want to talk about the takeaways from the podcast show. So we've, we've kind of doing three each to fit in with our three steps format. So three things we feel you would benefit from hearing about. So Jules, do you want to go first with your number one? Yeah, so my number one was video and the onward march of video and into podcasting or sitting alongside podcasting and how to use video and integrate it into your podcast offering. There were two people who spoke at different talks who I thought were really interesting. There was a woman from YouTube there, but there were two managers of YouTube stars one American um, and then the manager of the Sidemen, who is the UK collective, who were really, really popular. And they were talking about how they approach content creation and how they've kind of moved into podcasting, how it's a kind of add on to the YouTube offering. Um, The quote from one of the people speaking was that YouTube is the cornerstone of content creation. The difference that you get with YouTube is that you can make money out of creating content for YouTube, but it feels like there is an increasing crossover between podcasting and video, particularly if you create content that's really suitable for YouTube. And by that, I don't mean just putting your audio only podcast onto YouTube. It's kind of making content that's that's specific and it, it visually looks appealing yeah it's interesting it's not quite the style that um I, I do things at the moment but I think if you can integrate video in some way it's definitely going to help your your podcast be discovered my first one is from a talk which Holly Tucker um the founder of Not on the High Street did with Spence Matthews of Made in Chelsea fame and he's on about a million podcasts now so um Holly Tucker has got a podcast called Conversations of Inspiration and she said something which um really struck me so she was talking about podcasts so she's had a podcast for quite a while and it's really helped her network she sees the she's found it as a brilliant way to um, create a community around her and what she wants to achieve so she said that you know by making friends through the podcast it's such an intimate experience when you're pouring your heart out to someone or talking about your journey as a business uh, a female business entrepreneur with her that you build this bond but the thing that really struck me about what she said was she said creating a podcast should not be a tick box for a business Don't just do it because it's on the list. You can't build a podcast because you need to. You need to ask yourself, what are you trying to change? Who are you trying to help? And what is the mission? And that really reframed things for me because I think many people have, I've got to create a podcast. Yes, it's on the list as well as a newsletter or um, growing my email list or whatever it is. But actually think about what you can change, what your mission is. I thought that was brilliant. So the next one for me is... AI. So creating content is really time consuming. So if you create a podcast, that is quite a big uh, chunk of time that you'll need to dedicate to doing that. And then if you need to create content to help promote the podcast, it can be exhausting, as we well know. And we're always looking for ways to improve the process, to speed up the process, to simplify it. 
And now there are some really interesting tools coming on the market. The two that I'm going to mention, I didn't speak to them at the show, but they're two that look like they're doing a really good job. They might not be perfect at the moment, but we will be trying them out, are Cast Magic and Cap Show. And what these tools do, you put your audio, your audio only podcast into them, and then they will create a it'll create a clean transcript. That means basically a transcript that makes sense, uh, gets rid of some of the ums and errs and words that shouldn't be there. They will create a blog post. They will create social media content such as carousel posts with uh, key quotes on for LinkedIn and Instagram. So they're doing some really interesting stuff and they should hugely cut down the time it takes to reformat your content from a podcast. So yeah, really excited about those and we'll be trying them out. And that helps, you know, independent podcasters hugely where you don't have a social media team for your podcast. That's brilliant. And um, talking of that, um, I went to a talk uh, with Carver PR, who uh, are a massive PR company uh, run by Megan Carver. She looks after some massive podcasts. And this is all about growing um, your podcast and using PR to do that. So one thing she said was, you need to know your audience's demographic so you can target them. So really think about who they are, where they're going to, break out of the echo chamber that they're in. So who else is also in that audience or your potential audience? Think about those people as well. You need to have a think about where their interests lie. And one of the things that she said, which I thought was absolutely brilliant, was don't underestimate those niche communities, those specialist magazines and podcasts where your adjacent audiences are. Really think, so whatever podcast you've got, think about where those people are also listening or looking for information about whatever your podcast um, subject is. The other thing she said was about local. So thinking about local radio, local papers, what's your story and how you can put it across. And it's all about kind of growing your audience. So really thinking of this holistic um, view, really, of your podcast and your audience. Um, And yeah, I just thought that was really interesting. So my third takeaway, I have got probably about 10 more, but uh, <laughs> we'll maybe come on to that in another episode. Yeah. But the, the third, one of the third takeaways, which was is relevant to both the AI and the video and the YouTube, is the idea of branding and packaging and having consistent branding across different social media platforms. And the some of the YouTube people were talking about how they spent ages deciding or designing a thumbnail. Now, these are teams of content creators with a ton of staff, but I think we can learn a little bit from them in that if you're doing a video, have the same background, have a nice background behind you, have your lighting set up right, have something set up that you can easily... Um, create content from and make sure it's consistent with your branding, your website, your podcast, your YouTube channel, if you have one, your Instagram channel, and make sure there's like really good packaging and branding that is consistent uh, across all of those different places. But I just thought that there's quite a lot we can learn from how they are creating content and how they are looking at things very differently to how we are and how they are writing um, titles for their videos. Uh, I, I thought it was it was really interesting and very a lot of it translates to podcasting. But obviously, you've got to do what you can within the the time and the resources that you have, and that's where I think the AI tools will potentially come in and make your life a bit easier. And I guess with with all these things, it's kind of the end goal, isn't it? It doesn't have to be where you start right now. It's actually, let's have an eye on that and think about it. Okay, my final one, um, I went to the News Agents um, podcast chat. So that is probably the biggest um, podcast at the moment in the UK. It's backed by Global, Emily Maitlis and John Sopel front it and Emily Maitlis said something that thought I thought was really interesting. She said on the on the stories that you choose to cover. So they're talking about news, but we can relate this to anything. You know, if it's a podcast about marketing or whatever it is, on the stories you choose, the only metric that you should use is would I click on that? And I thought that was really good because 
you know, it's quite easy to just get into this churn mode with podcasts of I need to get this one out, I need to get this one out, but really, really question yourself, would I click on that? And I'm going to end with this one. And this was from the producer of the News Agents podcast. And remember that they've gone from zero to, I think they said, 13 million listens on their podcast. It's huge. And it's a, you know, massively wow. successful show. Yes, it's massive. And Dino Sofas, who um, is the producer, said, the main thing is that podcasts have got to be fun to make. And I think that's something that we all try, isn't it? If you're not having fun, why are you doing it? And when you're not having fun, you're not going to do it. So your podcast is just going to disappear with a load of others. Yeah, think about how you make it fun. Obviously, there's so much to take away from the podcast show. We could do like 15 episodes on this, and I'm sure we'll revisit um, some of the topics at a later date, Jules. But yeah, we've got to keep it fun. We've got to keep an eye on the future. The industry is still growing. There's still room for you. Think about your niche. And I guess kind of consider some of the things we've maybe talked about today. Is there anything that you want to um, mention, Jules, that you're kind of overall feeling towards podcasts, having gone to the show? Like, are you, did you feel inspired? I, I definitely felt inspired, but I think ending on keep it fun is probably the most important thing because you will just get so tired of it if it's not fun. And that's one of the absolute pleasures of making a podcast is, is keeping it fun. So I think that's a brilliant point to end on. Brilliant. So thank you for listening. And um, we have got to let you know our podcast has now been in the top 10 charts, which is an amazing thing. So thank Woo. you for subscribing and listening. And um, please hit subscribe so you don't miss any other episodes. And please share this with somebody who you know is thinking about a podcast or is already running their own podcast and could benefit from listening. So thank you for listening.